Hi, I'm Valerie Rofberg. I'm a biostatistician and research associate in the Brown Center for Evidence Synthesis and Health. Our tutorial today is going to be what you can do as a project lead in Abstracker. So if you create a project, you will automatically be the project lead for that project. You can also add people to be project leads, so you don't have to have created a project to be a project lead. Once you've signed into Abstracker, again, this is your landing page, and you can click on My Projects to see the projects that you're leading. So at the top, these are the projects I'm leading. And if I scroll down, I can see the projects in which I'm only a participant and not a lead. So you can see the difference in my capabilities here, or my permissions. So the first thing you can do is edit your admin settings. So here you'll see all of the people that are participants in this review. You can either remove them from the review, you could make them a project lead, or if they are a project lead, you could remove them from that project lead group. You can also invite reviewers to join this review by their emails, or you can copy and paste this link and send it out yourself to invite people to this project. So that was the Manage Participants tab. If you want to manage assignments, meaning give people a specific number of abstracts to screen and give them a due date for it, you can do that here by clicking on their username, telling them the number of citations or abstracts that they have to screen and by when, and click Create Assignment. And that will notify these participants that they have a new assignment for this abstract or project. You can also edit the settings of your review. So right now, this review is set to double screen. If you remember, we have a machine learning algorithm that runs in the background of Abstracker. If you get to a certain point where you're not accepting any abstracts anymore, and the remaining abstracts are likely to not be relevant, you might want to switch to single screen to speed up the process. You're confident at that point that your screeners know the inclusion and exclusion criteria, they are being accurate in their screening, and you don't need that double screen check anymore on them. You can also change how the abstracts are ordered. If you want to increase your pilot size, meaning we've already done a pilot round that had over 1,600 abstracts in it. If we want to do a few more for a new pilot round, all I would have to do is increase this number, and it will create another pilot round with that larger number in it. And Again, you can change the tag visibility if you'd like, and just click Apply to Review, and all of your changes will immediately take effect. The Add Citations button is if you've updated your search. So say you've been screening for a long time, a few months have passed, and you think there might be new literature that's been published in the meantime. You can rerun your search, get the new abstracts that have been published since you last exported your search, and you can upload those new abstracts to this abstract review, you won't have to create a new project for it. Finally, you can upload terms. These terms are those words that we talked about that you can highlight different colors. If you want, you can create a file, and if you're unsure of which file, you can click What Can I Upload? And this will tell you that you need a tab delimited file, and you essentially label those terms with ones, twos, negative ones, or negative twos, depending on the color you want them to show up as. And you can mass upload these highlighted terms. These terms will only show up on your personal instance of Abstracker. So you may want to allow other people to be project leads so that they can upload that file to their own projects as well. For now, we're going to skip this export button and come back to it at the end. The next thing you could do is look at the predictions. So again, this relates to that machine learning algorithm. So this is a histogram of the relevance scores of the remaining studies. So Abstracker is applying these scores based on what you've screened so far to the remaining studies and trying to determine how likely they are to be relevant to your project. Higher scores indicate more likely to be relevant. So if you have a lot of abstracts up in this area, it's likely that there are a few more, or a lot more, that you will be screening into your review. If after a certain point, most of 
your abstracts are falling in this area, it's likely that they won't be relevant to your review and you can move on to the next stage and switch to single screen and just speed up the rest of your screening process. You can also download these predictions to see exactly what the values are. If you wanted to create a more detailed histogram to see exactly what the scores are, you can do that. The next thing you can do is look at conflicts. So if you have your review set to double screen, there may be times where the screeners don't agree with each other on whether a given abstract should be included in your review. The screen that you come to will look like the normal screening page for Abstracker, but you'll see along the bottom a username and how they labeled that citation and when. And you can see that three of the people on this review wanted to include this abstract and one thought it was irrelevant. You may want to, early on, have everybody in the room or on a video chat looking at this as you resolve these conflicts. People can learn from each other, and as you get through more and more of these conflicts and refine your inclusion criteria, the number of conflicts that you run into will decrease. So you can see this review has 50 conflicts right now. We haven't resolved any of them yet. To resolve them, it's the same way as normal screening. So if I agree with the three reviewers and I think this should be included in our review, I'll click the green plus, or the green check. If I think it should be out, the red X. If I'm still unsure and we need to come back to this later, I can click the maybe button. Next, if you're curious, you can look at only the abstracts that reviewers have indicated as maybe. This is another great learning opportunity. So you may want everybody with you as you're going through and resolving this. By the end, if there are a few maybes still scattered throughout or even a few conflicts, the project lead or content expert might just resolve things on his or her own and they don't need everybody there to learn from it. If for some reason you've created a project by mistake or you're 100% done with your review, maybe it's a few years old, you can always delete a project to declutter this page for you. Typically the last step in the screening phase of a systematic review is to export your labels. You can export as an Excel file, RIS for the citations or the labels, or just a plain CSV. Typically all of these things will be exported if you don't want these internal or source IDs that Abstracker has created, that's fine. You'll just unhighlight them. And then you can see, so the PubMed ID, keywords, abstracts, title, journal, authors, and any tags or notes that the reviewers have added will be exported. You'll click this export button, and then you can download the file that's created. This is what one of those export files might look like. The name that's automatically assigned to this file is just a labels underscore and then the project number that Abstracker has internally for this project. And you can see all of the information about a given citation or abstract, the consensus when screening. So what if the reviewers agreed, this consensus will be what the reviewer said. If there was a conflict, this consensus will be what the conflict resolver has indicated. You can see what each reviewer said for a given abstract, and then you'll have those notes that we talked about, general notes, population, intervention, outcome, for each reviewer. That way they don't overwrite each other. This document can be used as a record for abstracts that you've included, excluded. You might still have some maybes in here that you can then resolve outside of Abstractor if you so choose. And then you'll have the PubMed ID, so you can start to retrieve these articles and move on to the data extraction step. So this concludes our Abstracker tutorial series. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us, and we hope you enjoy using Abstracker.